Hi, welcome back. I'm going to look at Voxengo Span today, which is one of those plugins that seems too good to be free. I keep an instance in the monitoring section of Reaper, along with a handful of other metering plugins, and an EQ which I might talk about another day. And the interface lives permanently on my third display, which I otherwise mostly use just for editing these videos. I like to hide the level and correlation meters and use it just for the analyzer. And I tweak the settings as follows. First of all, notice that the kick drum seems to occupy a lot of space between about 40 and 80 hertz. But this is just because the resolution is too low to show what's really happening in the low frequencies. Let's up it to the 8K setting. And now we get a much better impression of where the low fundamental of the kick drum lives and how it relates to the bottom end of the sousaphone. However, we now have much too much detail everywhere else. I'm not interested in individual harmonics or partials when looking at the full mix. I want to see overall trends. So I like to use some smoothing. Let's go for a third of an octave. And similarly, I'm not interested in individual transients. So I'm going to add more temporal smoothing by increasing the averaging window size. I usually go for 6K. This kind of setting can be very useful when mixing. If you're working with smaller monitors and no sub, and especially if you're also working in an untreated room with no bass trapping, you may have no choice but to rely on the analyzer to tell you what's going on in the bottom octaves. That's the only scenario where I might advocate adjusting EQ settings based only on what you're seeing. But the analyzer can greatly speed up your workflow when your eyes and ears agree. If you're hearing a boxy or nasal character, and you're also seeing a buildup of energy in the low mid range, you know immediately where the problem is likely to be when you can adjust your EQ settings accordingly. Of course, sometimes you might see a buildup of energy in a certain frequency range without hearing any problems. Never adjust your EQ in those circumstances. It's possible that you do indeed have a problem buildup at that frequency, but you're not hearing it because your brain has tuned it out. This is especially likely if you've been mixing for some time and this buildup has increased gradually over that time. Your brain will acclimatize and tune out the resulting boxiness or muddiness as if it's adjusting its own EQ between your ears. And that boxy or muddy sound you're listening to becomes the new normal, so you're unaware there's an issue. Or that might just be how your mix is supposed to look. Not all good sounding mixes look like a flat line on an analyzer. In fact, probably most don't. The best strategy is to take a break and rest your ears. Make a coffee, have a snack, go for a smoke, whatever. Ideally, listen to a bit of a well-balanced reference mix to reset your hearing and flatten off your internal EQ. When you come back to your mix, it'll be obvious whether you have a lumpy frequency response that needs fixing, or whether you've just crafted a great mix with its own unique spectral shape. Okay, before I leave you, I'm gonna show you another little tweak I like to make. First of all, we need to change the routing, but we don't need to use the slightly daunting looking routing page. Instead, I'll just open the menu to the right and choose the mid-side stereo routing preset. Now I can toggle between the mid channel, which shows everything that's the same for both left and right, or the side channel, which shows everything that's different. Let's tweak the settings to match the mid display. I'll set the same block size and the same window size. But I don't need to worry about the display range settings below because I don't look at this display directly. Before I switch back to the mid channel though, I'm gonna change the color to a more vivid shade of red. And now I'm going to select that as the underlay for the mid display. Now I can see my mid channel in green with the side channel superimposed and looking orange. A typical well-behaved stereo mix will have the side channel slightly lower than the mid channel for most of the spectrum, but will roll off at the bottom end, so the low sub bass is mostly mono. I do use a subwoofer, and I have bass traps in the corners of my room, so I'm reasonably confident I can hear what's going on in the lowest octaves of my mid channel. But I only have one subwoofer wired in mono, 
So it's physically impossible for me to be aware of excessive stereo width in the lowest octaves, even if I had superhuman hearing that could detect it. It's good practice to keep your low sub bass mostly mono anyway, but it's especially important if your mix is destined to end up on vinyl, as this one did. For the rest of the spectrum, it's normal for it to sit a few dB lower than the mids. If the side creeps up to the same level, that's a warning sign that it might be a good idea to check in mono. But if the side levels poke up higher than the mids at some frequency, as I can demonstrate with a side channel boost from Pro-Q3, this shows up as a red flag warning that the mix is likely to sound radically different in mono. And you should definitely do a mono check before you print it and deliver. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Taking up your district, getting chased by misfits. I give them one thing, these suckers are persistent, but they ain't fast enough. Yo, I feel like LOD thinking, oh, what a rush. Sky cleans and elevators getting up, but one is all these.